Here we are in the Presidio. My name is Gabriel Macht. I'm playing the spirit in Will Eisner's The Spirit, which is also Frank Miller's The Spirit, which is also Stu Mashwitz's The Spirit. He was a visual effects supervisor on our film, and he may be the real star. You're not making this easy. And cut. There was one thing that I wasn't crazy about working with you. You wanted me to like take a lug wrench to my nuts about 25 <laughs> times. <laughs> they brought me in because of my experience with Sin City. And they knew it was going to be a green screen movie, but how green it was going to be, <laughs> you know, that was up for grabs. We are effectively building sets. We're effectively lighting those sets. We're effectively photographing those sets. We're doing practical effects when we add CG rain. So we're doing a lot of the jobs that are ordinarily done on the set. We're, we're doing all of those in CG. It's a much more artistic endeavor and therefore a lot more satisfying. We break shots into effectively two classifications. There's a 2D shot and a 3D shot. So what we call the walking and talking sequence where you and Dolan and Morgan Cern are storming down the streets of Central City. That's a 3D shot because the camera's moving and we've got taxi cabs driving by in the distance and buildings and pigeons flying by in the background. All of that stuff needs to be created in a 3D world. Then you punch in on a close-up and there's just a building behind you and it's a little bit out of focus. That shot can be done two-dimensional. And that's part of how the process of putting this movie together is more art than science. Put a robe on or something, but no tricks. Yes. In order for your feet to feel like they're stuck to the ground when we go to the, the finished shot, this background needs to be tracked into the same movement. What we can do is we can actually show you a split screen. That's really intense to see the shadow in yeah. the actual green screen. Yeah. Yeah. Now watch this. Watch how your foot leaves a little twisty footprint in the snow right yeah. there. Can I just say, <laughs> I hit the camera dead center. Yeah. And that was a real snowball, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I nailed the actual lens. I think that's the thing, is a lot of people would expect it to be CG, but no way. Oh wow, that's, that's, that's like a blueprint of That's here. basically the image processing path and algorithms that are being applied to the snowplow shot. This is all just baking soda on a table. Do you know how to use every piece of equipment? <laughs> all of these not, the, not the way Steve does. You can see here, it's beginning to get layered into the matte painting background plate that we have and the snowplow itself gets layered in. To be clear, we're seeing the compositing phase. At some point, this was rendered as a full 3D truck. It's made up of many different passes. Basically, these are different lighting passes, and then there's various reflection passes to get the surface properties of metal versus snow, and uh, we add in things like lights and glows and interactive glow inside of the exhaust, and you get your final product which we then composite into the shot. Stu Mashwitz is, is one of the three founding members of the orphanage, and he's brought together a, a family of, of artists uh, at the orphanage. He's connected with 10 other visual effects companies around the world. And at the orphanage in San Francisco, um, Stu with uh, Nancy St. John, the visual effects producer, have created thousands of visual effects shots. We have 1,847 shots total. Of that, 1,177 are done. <laughs> Stu is the person in the middle of that storm explaining to hundreds of people what needs to be there, what, what we're not seeing yet, seeing the first version and commenting on it. It's an enormous, it, just any shot, you just hit pause and there's 8,000 decisions. Someone had to help shepherd through, that's what Stu has done. Nice job. That reminds me of Dick Tracy, so it's like a nostalgic feeling. Oh! <laughs>
in our piece on Stu, um, I did some of the interviewing. So instead of having some anchor person mm -hmm. here, I'm going to ask a question and maybe you can answer. Oh, that'll be weird. All right. <laughs> Why did you go with the orphanage in the first place? Um, because they're they're because of Stu Masters. I came in with a bunch of drawings of how I wanted things to look, and Stu showed me how he would create them and what he needed in order to have room to to to. Uh, bring him to life. You blow holes in his cape and you appear in the holes with the machine gun. That's cool. In many, many ways, we made the movie in post. I mean, we could change lighting, we could change the size of the person in the shot, we could move them. And that was really Stu Nashua's. He's the certifiable genius. I used to call him Frank's unknown love child because they have very similar minds and so they worked together so brilliantly. He did an awesome job of explaining what was going to be there or helping us adjust so that we can use our imaginations to get to the place we want to be. Don't quit your day job. All right. <laughs> There is a degree to which uh, superhero movies and action movies are basically no different than a Pixar thing, you know? I mean, they're completely products of CG animation, and they're beautiful to behold, but it's sort of a different thing than an action sequence that's based on stunts. Which and, is uh, what we lean to, right? You know, There's no animation in there, right? Yeah, that is one of the most amazing things about The Spirit, is that it is a superhero movie with with out one single CG stunt double in it. On that topic, I have a question for you. Do you always work in a standard three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system? <laughs> 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 well, yes, we do. There's a Cartesian coordinate system. Is that a question from a viewer? <laughs> <laughs>